Hey guys, what is going on? It's Hamish from Income Stream Surfers. In today's video, I'm going to talk about why I keep making videos about SEMrush and Ahrefs. But before we get into that, I just wanted to say something very quickly. Although I mainly focus on Redbubble in my videos, these two tools work for every single website. You can use them for Merch by Amazon, Etsy, Zazzle, all of these print-on-demand websites or just generally any website that you want organic traffic information on, these tools are really, really good for. It will give you the data that you can't really find elsewhere unless you do a lot of research. And even if you do a lot of research, it's always hard to know the volumes and whether it's worth it, et cetera, et cetera. So using these tools just makes that process so much easier. And if you've done any SEO, you know how good these tools can be. And one of the best things is obviously that you can do it completely for free with the SCM Rush free trial. You have to pay $7 for Ahrefs for one week. I kind of like mixing it up. Sometimes I pay for, S uh, for Ahrefs, sometimes I just get the SEMrush free trial. Um, but yeah, make sure that you stay around for the whole video because if you follow this video step by step, you'll be able to download millions of keywords for free and you'll understand why these keywords are going to be so powerful. So the first thing we need to talk about are what these tools actually are. What are SEMrush and what are Ahrefs? They're basically like mini Googles or they use the same crawling mechanisms that Google uses to crawl your website. So if you input your website on Ahrefs, if you're trying to grow your website organically, it will crawl your website just like Google does. While it's crawling, it also makes note of where you appear on the search engine result page. And once you connect it with search engine console, it will show you kind of, you know, where you're ranking and stuff. The good thing about this though, is that this information is viewable for any website. So it's not always completely accurate, but if you input any website, onto one of these tools, it can show you the top pages for that website. So which websites are ranking for which keywords, basically. So let's talk about what a search engine result page actually is. This is a question I get quite frequently. So a SERP, I'll refer to it as a SERP, S-E-R-P, SERP, is the screen that you see when you Google something. So every time you Google something, you see a SERP, a search engine result page. And what you see is a carefully calculated screen, like a result page, which has been calculated by Google's algorithms to attempt to show you the most relevant piece of content at the top or below ads. The most important thing in, in the algorithm is the intent. What is the user searching for? If they deem a website's page is the most relevant thing, it will appear just below the ads. So, and then even sometimes there won't be ads. So on things that aren't really, you know, if, if people are just searching for knowledge, knowledge, then they normally don't show ads, for example. The SERP is the most important part of any SEO research. If you are not Googling every single keyword that you find using any method or using my methods, you're not doing them properly. You need to understand what is ranking in which position. So another thing that is really good about these tools is that it can do that automatically for you. The SERP also contains one of the best keyword methods available, which is the people also asked and people also searched for section of the SERP. These are often killer keywords and they're deemed relevant by Google, relevant enough to be shown. And therefore, if you focus on those keywords and you use those keywords in a blog post, for example, then you know that Google has already deemed that they are relevant and it will therefore start to rank, most likely. So if you're researching an article for a blog post, or even if you're just doing POD research, if, for example, you search for um, American flag t-shirt, and all of the people also searched for American flag 
hat, then you know that it's probably worth making a hat. I need to stop using that example, but there you go. Okay, back to SCMrefs and Ahrefs. These tools are so good for Redbubble, Etsy, Merch by Amazon, print on demand research in general for two reasons. So like we talked about before, they can tell you which keywords these print on demand marketplaces rank for on Google, which is incredibly vital information and you can find some absolute gold if you look carefully. And number two, you can download all of these keywords for free if you use SEMrush or for $7 if you use Ahrefs. And the good thing about that, I'm going to talk about more at the end of the video, I'm going to talk more about this, but the good thing about that is that you have that data forever. So let's just talk about the two available trials. Like I said, Ahrefs is $7 for a week, but SEMrush is free. And I actually think SEMrush is better for this particular type of research because I've been using Ahrefs, I've been using SEMrush, and recently Ahrefs has been seeming a little bit less accurate. I always thought it was the most accurate, but SEMrush seems more accurate, honestly, at the moment. So I might have to transfer to SEMrush in general. Um, but these keyword tools essentially tap into Google's SERP, Search Engine Result page, and they can show you incredible keywords that you would never think of on your own. And it's up to you to really dig deep. So when I say that you can download these keywords, you can download 30,000 at a time, but say the first 10,000 might be useless to you because they're so competitive or because they're just junk or they're copyright or whatever. So you can, you can cut that off at the top and not focus on keywords that are searched a lot and you can find some really, really good data if you really dig deep, okay? And don't just, just forget about the um, monthly searches that Ahrefs says that something has or SEMrush says something has. Just forget about it. Just use your brain, use logic. If you think that someone will search for that and it's got the word T-shirt in there, you, you're gonna wanna do it because you might sell. Another thing that these tools are really, really useful for is competitor research. I've just been talking about this in the last few videos that I've done using these tools to do competitor research on each other. SEMrush in particular has a specific tool for this, which I talked about in my video yesterday. I'll leave a link to that video there now. Uh, and that particular tool allows you to basically input one website and you can see the data from that one website compared to four different websites. And you can see which words, which keywords this one website is not ranking for, but these four are ranking for. This gives you huge potential to find untapped keywords by using competitors against one another. Competitor research, research is fundamental for SEO. If you know anything about SEO, you probably already know this. Um, so yeah, these tools are really, really good for it. To summarize what we know so far, these tools can show us keywords that are ranking in top spots on Google and they show, they give us kind of a volume. So we have an understanding of whether it's worth it from our perspective and they allow us to use competitors against one another. Another great use of these tools is that they can show newly ranking keywords. This means you can jump on trends as they're emerging which gives you some nice quick sales. I've been thinking about this more and more since I made a video about this recently, and it's a really, really good method because you can see that the peop people are using you know, all these different ways to find keywords, and you can see the keywords as they start to rank, basically. So you can see a newly ranking keyword that has only 30 competition because only the really, really good Redbubble people are already making the design, so you can jump on that trend and you can make some quick sales. I think it's a really, really good method. Um, but yeah, you can also use the search operator method. Um, I'll, uh, I'll talk about that in a second. The way this works is that Ahrefs constantly is looking for keywords on Redbubble's website. So it's tracking Redbubble because Redbubble is a known entity in, on Google. So Ahrefs is tracking it. And once it starts ranking for a new page on the SERP, it will then show that data in Ahrefs. So if a new meme or something emerges, it's very, very likely that someone will post it to Redbubble, like I just talked about. Ahrefs or SEMrush will pick it up 
make a note of it, and then show it to you. This is honestly an absolutely amazing method, and a lot of these trends, if they're kind of, not all trends just die. Sometimes trends become evergreen, and people wanna buy them in three years time, four years time, and you can always be making some sales from these keywords. One thing I will say about these tools is just like everything else, it depends how much you are willing to put in. I am thinking of doing some live streams where people can come and we, I'll do some research on Ahrefs or SEMrush and you guys can ask me questions and we can, I can kind of show you how, how to do it. If, yeah, basically, if you have any questions, you can come in and ask and I think that'll help some people. So yeah, leave a comment if you're interested in seeing some live streams. I'm definitely interested in doing some. Um, but yeah, the general process behind these tools is as follows. You choose a website, so Redbubble, Etsy, etc., etc., and you type it into the domain checker on SEMrush or Ahrefs. You add different filters, so you can choose only to show um, results where Redbubble is in the top three so that you know that uh, it's ranking and that you can make some sales that way. Or you can show URLs or titles containing the word shirt. If you're making shirts or someone asked me about this recently, if you sell jewelry, you can just choose different jewelry types like necklace or earrings if you're selling on Etsy and you can just have a look and see what's trending or see what's uh, been ranking on Google without too much competition. You then find a keyword with decent searches per month. There is no minimum though. Like when I say decent searches per month, you can, you can just do it for any keyword you find on Ahrefs. If Ahrefs is there, it means it's ranking on Google. It means it's getting data. So just, just try the, any keyword you find. Put your Google into, make the Google search in your target country. So for example, America. Search the keyword on Google and see where your target POD marketplace is. So let's say you only sell on Redbubble, then you want to know that Redbubble is in the top three. If it doesn't appear on Google, it's either an opportunity or it's a wasted keyword. And the way that you can tell is if you go on Redbubble and it has 50,000 results, it's a bad keyword and you just forget about it. If you go on Redbubble and it only has, you know, 100 results and none of them are exact phrase match titles, you can then make that product with the exact phrase match of the keyword. So like literally exactly what Ahrefs says, you just put that as the title, put it in the description, write a fairly you know nice description, and then just post it. You could potentially start ranking, you know, position seven, position eight, but not the Redbubble search result page, the your actual product page. So if you really, really try with a design like that and it has a lot of searches per month and there's not a lot of competition on Redbubble and no one's using exact phrase match, you can potentially get on there if there are some weak websites on the SERP. The main reason that I love these tools so much is that they spot organic opportunities that we just wouldn't really find or would be very, very difficult with your own research. There are definitely methods, there are definitely other methods. For example, my search operator method for POD works really, really well, but it's reliant on what you put in. It's reliant on human input instead of tracking it automatically with a tool. The problem with human input is that, you know, we, we have to think about what keyword we want to be searching for and it just, it makes everything more complicated, et cetera, et cetera. So it can be a bit of a nightmare, honestly. So it's, it's best to use these tools because they're just doing all of what we want to do automatically for us and they already tell us if it's worth it because they show volume. So I told you before that at the end of this video I was going to talk about downloading a metric ton of keywords. Let's just talk about that very, very quickly. Basically, like I said before, you can input different filters onto Ahrefs or SEMrush. So the top three positions only, or you know, ranking in France, ranking in Germany, ranking in Italy, uh, only have you know under one thousand searches per month according to Ahrefs, so that you cut all of the kind of spam at the top. That's you know, it's like Coca Cola logo 
and you know um, some weird things that you just don't want to make designs about I promise you so we just cut that layer off and we put only 1,000 searches per month or we can include shirt or hat or sticker in the title or URL and basically each time you change the filter Ahrefs and SEMrush will completely change their output. There will be some repetition, obviously, and you'll come across the same keywords, etc., etc. But the th every time it will give you a different set of results. You can then download those results up to thirty thousand on SEMrush's trial, unless you pick the Guru option. I assume you can download more. So if you are doing the SEMrush trial, just pick the higher trial, I guess, and then download more at a time if there are more. Each time you download them, that's 30,000 keywords that you've then got on a CSV forever. I'm going to show you how to do this in like a little video here, but you just click export and then you click um, CSV and then you import it into a Google um, sheet and then you've got it forever. And this data is unbelievably valuable for you. It's not only really, really valuable, but it's like it's data from Google. It's data from two of the biggest SEO tools and it's yours forever for free that you can then just start making designs on um, designs from over the next you know year two years and another really really good thing if you use Ahrefs instead of SEMrush is every week Ahrefs will send you newly ranking keywords for any websites that you add to um, a project basically you can click add project you can click redbubble you can add redbubble as a project every week ahrefs will send you newly ranking keywords for those websites so yeah if you if you're just focusing on keywords and you just want as many keywords as possible for as long time as possible i would probably say ahrefs seven dollar trial is the better option but i think SEMrush is just a little bit better with its um data and also with its um, interface. I think I prefer its interface, its tools. It has some really, really nice tools that Ahrefs lacks and you have to do them manually. Okay guys, I really, really wanted to talk about this because these tools are probably the best keyword method that I can think of for um, Redbubble or for other POD websites. And I hope that this video has demonstrated the power of these tools and yeah, I'll see you in the next one. See you really, really soon. Peace out.